Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here for this presentation of the Coding for Education project. I'm Stefano Federici. I teach, I'm a teacher at the University of Cagliari with my colleagues. And in the Coding for Education project, we created some digital tools to support the distance learning for all the school subjects, hopefully, and levels during the lockdown imposed by the COVID pandemic. And we try to reduce the impact of the pandemic on the students that couldn't go to school. This all started in early March when we realized that we had some spare time as due to the lockdown, we didn't have a very good organization at the time. And we knew that in our computer science courses, our students were developing educational projects by using block languages. And at the very same time, we had a lot of teachers, they needed support to make their lessons, their online lessons more engaging for the students. And finally, we had several students that had to complete their course of studies and they needed to do a distance traineeship. traineeship. So all these put together did start to the, an unexpected move uh, from classroom to distance learning. So we organized a team of six students and two professors that work as supervisors uh, from the computer science courses of the degree in computational, sorry, in uh, communication studies. And they were experts at creating educational projects based on block languages such as Napper or Scratch. So we organized this workflow. We were in touch with a lot of school teachers because we are a department of education. And each teacher proposed a given topic and provided the general knowledge about the topic. And so we had one university supervisor that provided the overall design of the project. And for each project, we had a student that was in charge of coding the project, and another student that was in charge of creating the vector graphics for the project to make it more engaging and even more usable. And then the supervisor gave their continuous feedback, and this was repeated again and again until the project was technically sound. In the final test phase, we had each school teacher, the one who proposed the topic, that tested uh, the project and with their students. And we had a positive feedback both from teachers and students. Teachers were very happy because it was the very first time they had the support to develop digital tools that was specifically tailored to their needs. And they thought that the final quality of the project was very good. And even the students were very satisfied as all the dimensions in the final survey in which we asked them, did you like the app? Did you like the drawings? Was using, uh, was using the app fun? <coughs> Would you like to use these apps when you are back to school too? Would you like to use these apps with your friends? So several questions. They all gave a very positive uh, feedback 90 to 100 percent positive and the preliminary, preliminary plan of the project was proposed on early march just at the beginning of the lockdown and the aim was assembling many simple projects with short explanation and just a short space for a lot of topics but due to organizational <laughs> problems because we had to accommodate the students our students' traineeships. Uh, the first project would just start on mid-April 2020. So we felt that we had little time to develop projects for it could be very useful for the students because in, in Italy the schools ended on the, at the beginning of June, June 8. So we revised the plan and we decided to assemble just a few quality projects, high quality projects, and that were based on the best practices that our students had learned in their courses. And so to build a project base 
and keep the project going even after the, the end of the schools. So we enrolled and we will enroll more students to work on those project templates that were developed by the first team of six students. So to have many good projects ready for the beginning of the next school year on the 2024. And what are the features of these high quality projects? Well, we have now five phases, an introduction, an explanation, animated explanation, a phase of instructions on the test phase, an animated test phase, and with animated feedback and a final feedback phase. All projects have a full audio and that was required by the teachers because of the students with learning disorders. That was an help to them. And they were fully animated to make them clearer and even more, more engaging to the students. And <clears throat> we had also a final animated feedback in the test phase, so to have a sort of a reinforcement phase in the final phase of the project. Then we had a secondary goal, because those projects were not too many, we tried to make them as easy as possible, so they were not only the good prototypes for future projects, but also we wanted to see if they were updatable by school teachers. So each project has been developed on many similar simple sprites to have a high modularity and many similar simple scripts and many messages. So they are highly modular again and easily updatable. And we restricted the set of blocks to a limited set in order to have just a few blocks that the teachers can learn quickly how they work. And then we had vector graphics that is easier to uh, use by both teachers and our students to develop other new projects. So these are the phases of development of each project. Uh, we, at the beginning, planned to use just Snap because we like Snap. But SNAP has no text tool, and text was very important at the beginning for this project. We decided to start with Scratch 1.4, not Scratch 3, because maybe this, uh, this is more usable on non very powerful devices that are very common in school and Italian houses. And then we moved the project to Scratch 3 uh, to make, to create the flexible vector graphics. Finally, we are now moving the project to SNAP and I have to thank Dylan Servillas for his excellent Snappinator. And this, this is a working project because there are some differences in how costumes are, are handled in SNAP and in Scratch. There is the default uh, tarpaulin costume in SNAP. And there are differences in how speech bubbles are positioned and on the levels of the speech bubbles in the project. This is different from Scratch and Snap. And we have maybe uh, speech bubbles that it are covered by other sprites or that cover important part of the project. So we, are, we have to revise all this positioning. And the project, the problem is also the text handling in, in, in the costumes as they are now imported as pure graphics they are not very well aligned always. And the final problem is the size of the projects that in the current website of SNAP is limited to 10 megabytes. So what's the actual development? <laughs> development instead of having a very large number of projects, we have just four very good final projects. They have full animated explanation and full animated feedback and full audio. We are three more projects in development, but the good news is that we have more than 100 good educational projects that were developed by our students since 2014 in our courses. We imported all the projects, the four projects in Scratch 3, and they are available 
in several studios in the coding for eduction. I'm sorry, I just made it wrong the first time I wrote it and I had no time to change it to create another user. So it's coding for eduction and not education. And there are several studios. And as for the SNAP version, as I, as I said, the import is in progress and the projects are available, are available and will be available in several SNAP collections. They are published. And we plan to create a dedicated SNAP Cloud website for the project uh, so that we can organize the project as we like more. And we can also allow for larger projects, more than 10 megabytes. Uh, what's the future work? We want to revise and simplify the code of the projects to make it more uniform uh, throughout the whole project base. And because we want to see if the teachers are able to reuse this code when it's, it, that made, uh, it has been revised and simplified. And also to reuse the vector images to upgrade the projects by themselves. That would be a really good um, goal. And then we make, to make the projects multilingual, so to open the project base to a larger learning community. Here we have a, an example project, project about subtraction. And let's see the project. This is fully imported in SNAP. Oh, sorry, I'm interrupted, okay, with a zoom taskbar. Okay, this is the project. And as you can see, we have many similar sprites for example, the teacher, one, two, and three, <laughs> another teacher for the instructions, another teacher for the test phase, and the scripts in the sprites, as you can see, let me clean up, okay they have a very similar structure. Oh, sorry, this is the project about <laughs> direct and indirect speech. The project about subtraction was under the Zoom toolbar. I missed it. Uh, but the structure is similar, as I said. We have uh, speech and voice, and we had a lot of messages that are there to synchronize all the sprites. And if you see, this project, you can find more than 300 sprites in the project. So every sprite has very simple behavior, very short scripts, so that it should be easier to reuse these kind of scripts and to update maybe the scripts to, to add maybe further explanations on some more questions. Hopefully, this should be done by the teachers that are using the project. So even the, let me see if I can click, yes, the subtraction project, and this is the subtraction project, has many sprites, about 130, I think. And we have, for example, the character, the main character for the introduction, for the explanation, and also here, Sorry, I heard something. No, okay. So even here, the scripts are all based on moving, changing costume, uh, sending messages, saying something. These are the sequences that we can find in the explanation. So if you want to have a look at how they work in SNAP, Unfortunately, uh, in this version, we have no um, speech, no audio, because it was too large, we had to remove it. This is about the subtraction. Uh, the character have a lot of speech bubbles, 
and all speech bubbles are associated to audio. There are animations for each thing said in a speech bubble. So there is a direct correspondence between animation and explanation. Okay, here you can find some problems with the speech bubble under the sprites. We didn't correct it yet. And so all this is done, we hope, in the simplest possible way so that teachers can act on the project, can try to understand how it works and to maybe add something or maybe remove something they don't think that it is fully correct. So you can go to the explanation or maybe to, okay, we have a glitch, we have this sprite that is visible and it shouldn't. So we are going to hide it. Okay, we are back to the project. Okay, this is an explanation about the subtract subtraction work and this is addressed to uh, first grade students. We are waiting for the feedback from the teacher to see if it's good or if it, it needs some modifications. Okay, let me stop the project. This is another project about direct and indirect speech. We had basically at, this, at the beginning grammar and math projects uh, proposed by the teachers. You can find this project in the materials. If you go to this address, this web page, you can download all the materials. That is a SNAP 6.0 because we don't know if it, they work also in and SNAP 611 that was released today. And you have the project about subtraction and direct and indirect speech. So we hope that in the final version and the multilingual version, they will be addressed to a very large learning community. So thanks a lot. And we hope that the Coding for Education project is going ahead for a very long time and I put a final consideration that this was created by the series of very unfortunate or fortunate events. But we hope that this is going not to be so bad and we are going to help the students of our schools. Thank you very much. So I don't know if someone is uh, uh, taking care of questions or if you have questions, please ask <laughs> what you need. Uh, sorry, I missed the beginning. Uh, could you tell me in one minute? Uh, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> hi, hi, Stefano. W were you asked to do that or did you just come up with the idea so teachers can uh, take the stuff and use it or how did, how did that happen? Okay, the teachers were asking for support okay. in their online lessons <laughs> because they were not, not, not used to that. They had maybe some uh, materials, but they didn't have the specific materials they needed. So they asked us, and we asked them, do you need support? And they said, yes, <laughs> we need a lot of support. <laughs> so that, I guess so. So yes, so that's how it all started. And, but then if we have a project, maybe it's, it's very complex and it's not perfect for you because you are not the one who proposed the project. Mm -hmm. We wanted to try to make the scripts and the structure as simple as possible, as standard as possible. So maybe other teachers can adapt it to their needs. That's the idea. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's awesome. I'm pretty impressed, really cool.
Um, what, what lessons do you have? Oh, for now we have a lesson on Italian grammar and um, cool. the subtraction, mathematics, and we are creating lessons on uh, geography, the sea, mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. and, the, and we want to, for those projects that are not Italian specific, uh, to make them uh, multilingual so that it can be yeah, used by yeah. larger community. And we have also have another project for history, that is the how the cities have born in the were, mm -hmm. were born in the yeah, in, cool. And okay. yeah, we hope to have more topics. And if you, if you have interesting topics <laughs> and if you are teachers <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that would be really great so that we can go ahead and create interesting projects for all kinds of needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I l love the idea. So maybe I can send that around to some German <laughs> teachers as well. <laughs> Not the Italian so lessons probably, but the subtraction <laughs> sounds awesome. <laughs> yes, for the subtraction, uh, we have four different methods. I don't know if we are, uh, okay. Oh, maybe I stopped the project here. We have the, Oh, uh, let me see if I can. This is the explanation. Let's go. Okay. Yes, I think maybe we can start again from here. Let's see. I think you need okay. to share your screen first if you want to show something. All right. <laughs> you are very like, uh, oh, where is it? Okay. Share. Okay, sure. Okay, maybe you are now seeing the project, yeah? Okay, that's just some terminology, how the two numbers are called, and this is the result. As you see, some of the speed bubbles are on important parts of the uh, project. And we have four methods. They let me see. Yeah, the line on numbers and the abacus and the um, uh, the score the rulers. Yes, and your fingers. <laughs> so, for example, when you want to use your fingers, it explains how do you count by using your fingers, and you put your finger up and down oh this is so cute <laughs> yes <laughs> aren't they <laughs> uh, so it says that the first number for example is the number of uh, beaver you have in your holes and the second number is the number of beavers that go back to their hole and the final number is the result, is the number of beavers that are still outside their holes. And you can count it with your fingers by putting them up and down. And then for every single method, we have a uh, preliminary questions, interactive questions. And uh, it says, can I use my hands to make subtraction? Yes. And it says, Right, correct. You can put your fingers up and then down. Mm -hmm. So everything is animated in order to be more engaging for very young students. And this is really great because they can probably then also use the, the project at home and can even rewatch yes, it a yes, multiple it, that, times. Yes, that, that was the uh, real aim because they were using those projects in distant learning. So they were alone at home and they had just to run the project and learn by themselves. And there were more kids about uh, seven, eight, nine years old. So yes, they, that was the final goal. Okay, I'm okay. convinced. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Yadga, thanks to you. <laughs> okay, I can stop. Sharing, yes. So I think we are done. It's 30 <laughs> minutes o'clock. I don't know which time is your time. <laughs> Mine is 9.30 in the evening. 
so see you bye